Constitution is not a self-enforcing document. The Constitution is not a self-enforcing document. It's a wonderful document, but the words aren't going to jump off the page and do anything for you. So the Constitution needs champions. It needs committed citizenry. And that's why I'm happy to be with you today, because you are the champions. Thank you very, very much for your commitment and for the witness that you are giving for this cause. I wonder if you'd repeat after me, please. There is a God. There is a God. Our rights come from Him. Our rights come from Him. The purpose of civil government, the purpose of civil government is to protect God-given rights. Let's do it again. There is a God. Our rights come from Him. And the purpose of civil government is to protect God-given rights. What you just recited is the American philosophy of law and government. It's the American view of law and government. It's contained, it's paraphrased, but it's contained very concisely and precisely in the Declaration of Independence. Now, the purpose of civil government, as you just said, is to protect and defend God-given rights. It's not to make sure that your seatbelt is buttoned. It's not to make sure you're wearing your helmet. It's not to make sure you ate your veggies. And it's not to redistribute your wealth. It's not to take money from him, because look, he obviously has it. And give it to him, because look, he obviously needs it. I need it. She needs it. I never met a man who didn't need it. Right. Or a woman. And it's also not the job and the purpose of government to protect your health. Right. It's not the job of the government to protect your health. It's the job of the government to protect your liberty so that you can protect your health. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no right way to do a wrong thing. Say that with me. There's no right way to do a wrong thing. When government officials do something that they do not have the authority to do, it never turns out well. It is always a failure. It can't be anything but a failure. And Governor Hogan's unauthorized interference in the economy, in health care, and his misuse of police powers are no exception. Fidelity to the Constitution is one of the two ways that we judge the actions of civil government and whether they're lawful or whether they're pretended legislation. As Jefferson, that's what Jefferson called it in the Declaration of Independence. You might call it the temporary or the earthly standard, fidelity to the Constitution. The other standard used to judge whether enactments of civil government are lawful is God's word. This is, you might call, the eternal standard. As a matter of fact, you should call it the eternal standard. Using these two standards, they form the basis for the decision by our founders in the Declaration of Independence and the decision that they made. Using these two standards, they listed a series of 27 grievances against the king, including the misuse of powers, police powers against the people. And they concluded in that document that King George III was unfit to be the ruler of a free people. And their legal and logical conclusion was that by his persistent and continued violations of their colonial charters and his arbitrary actions, he had unkinged himself. He had unkinged himself, quote unquote, yep. because he had repeatedly violated and had broken the compact, the contract that had previously bound him to the people. And so, by this declaration to the world, along with examples of his conduct to back it up, they were justified to declare that they were no longer bound to him and he was no longer their king. They then asked the supreme judge of the universe to bless their efforts as they pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. Now you probably know where I'm going. Right? Applying this historical record to our present situation, the parallels, I think you will agree, are clear. 
Governor Hogan has openly and notoriously violated our Constitution and his oath to protect it in at least the following ways. Article 1 of the Declaration of Rights says this, quote, that all government of right originates from the people, is founded in compact only and instituted solely for the good of the whole, unquote. Ladies and gentlemen, by means of lockdowns, house arrest, and closing of churches and businesses, he has broken the contract. Article 4 says this, quote, that the people of this state have the sole and exclusive right of regulating the internal government and police thereof as a free, sovereign, and independent state, unquote. Ladies and gentlemen, he has com commandeered and misused police to enforce his unlawful edicts and orders. They are not his police. They are our police. We pay their salaries. Article 8, and I quote, the legislative, executive, and judicial powers of government ought to be forever separate and distinct from each other, and no person exercising the functions of one of said departments shall assume or discharge the duties of any other. Ladies and gentlemen, he has violated the separation of powers by pretending to make laws by means of edicts, orders, and proclamations. Hugely. Article 24 says that no man ought to be deprived of his life, liberty, or property but by the judgment of his peers or by the law of the land. Unquote. By pronouncing, ladies and gentlemen, that some businesses are non-essential, he's deprived citizens of their property without due process. Article 36, that as it is the duty of every man to worship God in such a manner as he, as he thinks most acceptable to him, he being the person, him being the capital H, him being God. Amen. All persons are equally entitled to protection in their religious liberty. Wherefore, no person ought by any law to be molested in his person or estate on account of his religious persuasion or profession or for his religious practice. All of the things he's done with respect to churches is totally lawless, and unconstitutional. Amen. It's unlawfully closed churches. He's misused the police power to molest those desiring to express their religious liberty. Article 44, that the provisions of this Constitution, excuse me, that the provisions of the Constitution of the United States and of this state apply as well in war as times of peace and any departure therefrom or violation thereof under the plea of necessity or any other plea is subversive of good government and tends to anarchy and despotism. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, this couldn't be more on point. Exactly. This is precisely, he has falsely exercised authority under the plea of necessity. See, it doesn't matter whether the virus is phony or fatal. It doesn't matter. That's a plea of necessity. That's, he's done precisely what the Constitution forbids. Amen. So here's the conclusion. By breaking the contract with the people from whom all government authority originates, remember Article 1, Mr. Hogan has rendered himself unfit to be the representative of the people of Maryland. George III unkinged himself. Yep. <laughs> Mr. Hogan has ungovernored himself. <laughs> by misusing the police power which originates in the people and by suspending the Constitution which binds him to us and us to him, he has suspended his own office. That's right. Amen. Let's be clear what we're saying here. We are not here to remove him from office. We are here to recognize, to mutually comprehend, and to declare that he has removed himself. Let me say that again. We are here to recognize, to mutually comprehend, and to declare that he has removed himself. These are his actions, and these are his consequences. We are here to call on other magistrates, such as sheriffs, and police officers, and legislators, 
who have, and other appointed government officials, all of whom have taken an oath to protect and defend the Constitution. We are here to call on them to face these issues squarely and honestly, to view the evidence in a clear, unbiased way. Actually, if I had the blessing of being able to address a gathering of law enforcement, law enforcement professionals, if God had, would grant me the blessing of being able to talk to law enforcement directly, if I could somehow be able to speak openly and directly to these fellow Americans, I think I would try to be careful not to falsely appeal to their pride, but rather to appeal to their intellectual honesty and their demonstrated decency. Yes. Listen up, officer. And I would say something maybe like this. Respectfully, sir or madam, when you took your oath of office as a sheriff, a police, or other law enforcement official, you swore obedience and fidelity to the United States Constitution yeah. Yeah. and to the Constitution of this state. You did not swear allegiance to a county executive Amen. or to a governor Right. Or do a health department official? Yeah. And right now, I am encouraging you to remember that solemn promise and to live up to its terms because right now, as your country and your state are in peril, it is especially crucial that you rededicate yourself to this noble calling. Your fidelity to your oath and to the rule of law requires you to abstain from enforcing any edict or order from a governor or any other executive which lacks constitutional authority. Amen. Moreover, moreover, and here's where the rubber hits the road. Your duty requires that you resist such edicts and orders and that you use the police power that comes to you from we the people so as to shelter and protect the citizenry from all acts of lawlessness, even and especially when they originate with civil authorities. Yep. Amen. I think if God granted me the opportunity to speak directly to police officers and sheriffs, that would be what I might say. They're listening. And to everyone else, I would add that if it were not for the courageous commitment and righteous action of our countrymen, over two centuries ago, you and I would not be standing on this lawn together. Amen. And as you look around this scene, please consider, as you look around this scene, please consider that your commitment, our commitment, will enable our great-grandchildren to stand here on this lawn. Amen. A century or two from now, as free men and free women in the free state of Maryland. Woo!